This is the Physics Required Practical 10. Investigate how the amount of infrared radiation absorbed or radiated by a surface depends on the nature of that surface. To do that, we're going to use a Leslie cube. This has a white surface, a matte black surface, a golden surface, and a shiny black surface. We put this on a heatproof mat to protect the table. We then use a funnel and fill it with boiling water. As this takes a while, here's one we've already filled with boiling water. To take the measurements, we use an infrared detector. To make sure that we get the same measurement each time, we use a ruler and measure five centimeters and then take the reading. We then record that reading. That was a golden surface, and it was 28. We then rotate it round, and this is the shiny black surface. Again, at five centimeters, we take a reading, record it with 76.5. Rotate it round again, Measure five centimeters. The white surface was 75.5. And then the matte black surface was 78. As the golden surface seemed anonymously low, I'm going to retake that measurement. came out as 29. I don't know if you wanted to have a look. Just about. <laughs> yep. So, that is clearly correct. Hello. This section of the video is going to look at how to draw the graph correctly when looking at dealing with data from a Leslie cube. Now, first of all, I want to recap quickly the types of data that you've got and how that influences the type of graph that you use. So, the first type of data is what we call categoric data. This is what we're dealing with in this instance, because on a Leslie cube, we have different colours on each side, and colours go into categories. So we can't have blue 0.5. It's got to be blue, red, white, black. So we call it categoric data. If you have categoric data, you always draw a bar graph. The second type of data that you're most likely to come across is what's called continuous data. So if you're dealing with temperature, or if you are dealing with length, those can have any value. So we say those are continuous, because you could be 100 centimetres, 100.5 centimetres, or 200 million centimetres. It can have any value. So that's continuous data. When you have continuous data, you need to draw a scatter graph. So they're the two types of data that we're going to look at in this video, but we are going to focus on drawing a bar graph for categoric data. So I've pre-drawn out my axes. Some of the most important things you have to do when drawing your graph is labelling those axes and including suitable units if necessary. So because this is a bar graph, we're going to be labelling up our bars. Um, our colours were gold. Then we had uh, shiny black. Then we had white, and then we had matte black. So I've labelled up my axes, but I haven't included a proper label to say what this is. So I'm going to say colour of surface. Now there's no unit for colour of surface, so I don't have to include a unit here. Next, I have to label my y-axis include a unit if appropriate, and then choose a suitable scale. In this case, we were looking at the infrared radiation that was given off by the Leslie cube, 
And we measured that using an infrared thermometer, so our units were degrees C. Now I need to choose a scale. Now our results went from 28 degrees all the way up to 78 degrees. Now, before I started filming this video, I did a, a quick calculation to see what units I needed to use to go up on my scale. The first thing I need to do to make it fit on here is include one of these marks, which shows that I'm not starting from zero. So I'm starting from 20. You've got to make sure that each division you use goes up evenly each time. So I'm going to go 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. And that means I can fit all of my points on this graph. So next it's drawing the bars. So for gold, it was 28. So that would be here. Whoa, that's not what I was expecting to happen. Ah, that's fine. So there's my first bar. For shiny black, it was 76.5. There. For white, it was 75.5, which is around there. And for matte black, it was 78. So there is our bar graph, clearly showing that the shiny gold surface emitted the least radiation. 